Good evening, everyone. My name is Shana Vieira. I am the public outreach coordinator on the Rock Beach Park uh, multi use trail and pedestrian bridge project. We are excited to present the uh, project updates and a scope for the next phase of the project. And we will be beginning shortly in about five minutes or so. So look forward to sharing that with you. Good evening, everyone. If you've just joined us, um, we are just waiting a few minutes to get started so that uh, everyone has a chance to join the presentation. So allow us just a, until um, for another two minutes or so, we'll be back online.
All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we are excited to present to you the updates on the project. My name is Shana Vieira. I am the public outreach coordinator uh, for the project. And uh, we are excited to present to you the updates, as I mentioned, for the Rock Creek Park Multi-Use Trail and Pedestrian Bridge, as well as talk to you about uh, the next stage of construction. Before we get started, we have some housekeeping um, to go through. I just want to, again, welcome you to our virtual public meeting. I hope everyone is staying safe. To begin, we will review some basic controls to help you participate on this platform. Please note that this is an open meeting and as required by DC code 2-578, this meeting is being recorded and the recording may be, will be made available to the public. The video file with uh, booth audio and video will be shared on the project team's website and DDOT's YouTube channel within seven days after this meeting has ended. This meeting is being also live streamed to DDOT's Facebook page. If you do not wish to have your voice recorded, please do not ask to speak. You may enter any questions or comments in the Q&A, uh, which we will review shortly. If you need technical support during this meeting, please call 202-309-3491. Using WebEx and audio video, so uh, again, some more housekeeping. The audio or mute, muting, everyone is on mute right now. You cannot unmute yourself. We can unmute you during our Q&A and comment period only. This helps to ensure that the meeting runs smoothly and there are no auditory disruptions during the presentation. To request to speak, you will need to use the raise hand feature. Also, there are closed captions. WebEx has automatic uh, has automatic system generated closed captions available during the meeting. Click on the CC icon in the lower left corner of the window to turn on closed captions. There are additional settings so that you may adjust the appearance of the captions if needed. Using the WebEx mobile application, if you are, click the three dot icon to scroll down and scroll down and then select the closed clap captions options. Make sure to to toggle, make sure the toggle uh, switches in blue, excuse me. Um, for video, your video camera is off by default and you will not be able to share video. If you have questions or comment that you would like to speak about, please raise your hand. This indicates to the project team that you would all that you would like to speak. To virtually raise your hand, click the raise hand icon at the bottom center of the WebEx window. Alternatively, you may press, press Control Shift R keys on your keyboard to raise your hand. If you join via web browser or mobile app, click the three dot icon and select raise hand. If you dialed in by phone, dial star three to use the raised hand function. If you have questions during the presentation, you can send it via the Q&A feature. To send a question, click the three dot icon in the bottom right side of the WebEx window and select Q&A. A new panel or window will appear. In the Ask field, select all panelists. Click the text box to type your question and press enter the enter key to send it. If you join via browser or mobile app, click the Q&A or question mark icon to access the Q&A to ask a question. And if you dial by phone, um, press dial star three to use the raise hand function. This indicates to the project team that you would like to speak and ask a question. So again, welcome to our presentation. Thank you so much for joining us. I will now uh, uh, allow Omid, who is our project lead, to kick it off. Thank you. Thank you, Shaina. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Rock Creek Park Trail Project uh, Construction Public Meeting number three. Thank you for participation. Uh, my name is Omid Gamey. I'm project manager for Rock Creek Park Trail Project. This public meeting gives residents and stakeholders an opportunity to learn more about the project, uh, the construction schedule, maintenance of traffic, and what to expect during the construction. As uh, you know, majority of the project uh, has been completed and open to the public uh, stage one. Uh, Rose Park Trail Stage 4, Western Ridge Trail Stage 6, uh, Pierce Mill, uh, Stage 7, Pierce Mill to Broad Branch, 100% uh, complete and open to the public. And just uh, Phase 2, 
will be completed by end of the, this month, June 22, and just we expect stage uh, five with uh, some initial work has been completed already and majority of activity on this uh, phase will start in the end of June 22 after uh, we move from to that area of expected completion of the early uh, fall uh, 22. And construction will be continued by fall 22. Just the uh, next slide, please. Just I want to introduce our team. Uh, we have been working with uh, our engineer of record, Stantec. They are the construction management consultant, uh, Andrew Graff and Kenny Rafter, Shane Oviera. And also, as the uh, Rock Creek Park Trail project work performed on uh, NPS land, uh, we have been partnering with the uh, National Park Services as a key stockholder. And just on a turn this presentation over to Mr. Nick uh, uh, Bartolomeo. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Nick Bartolomeo. I'm manager of the park's historic and natural resources, lands, and plantings programs. And for Rock Creek Park Superintendent Julia Washburn, excuse me, I'd like to thank you for coming to tonight's community meeting. National Park Service is incredibly excited that within the next few weeks, park visitors will have a wide, smooth, and safe paved trail that stretches from Broad Branch Road in the north to P Street and Rose Park in the south. It's a long awaited improvement that will only get better when, as you heard tonight, we complete the next and final segment of the trail project along Piney Branch Parkway. Now people on 16th Street on the east side of the park will have a new, smooth, safe paved trail to access all the recreational facilities, as well as the scenic, historic, and natural resources that are found in Rock Creek Park. We're very grateful to park visitors and Washington area residents for their patience as the project team worked to rebuild the park's trail system segment by segment. We ask for that patience again when, as also as you'll learn tonight, we restrict access to Piney Branch Parkway for several months in order to safely construct the trail and rebuild a part of an historic stone wall adjacent to Piney Branch Creek. I'd like to remind everyone to please stay out of construction zones for your own safety, as well as the safety of our partners with the District Department of Transportation and their contractor staff. I'd like to thank DDOT for all the work they've been put, that I've put into the planning, design, and construction of this trail. It has been quite a journey over the past 10 plus years and one the National Park Service is grateful of to have taken with its partners. We hope that you enjoy the new trail system and I'll be around for the rest of the evening, evening if there are any questions. Now turning it back to Andy and the rest of the project team. Okay, thank you, Nick. Thank you, Omed. Um, good evening, everyone. So this is our third and final public meeting of the construction phase for this project. And really tonight, we want to be able to show you some of the exciting progress we made since we last spoke in September. And then we really want to focus in on, as Nick mentioned, some of the upcoming work that we have, the final stage of the Piney Branch Parkway, which will be the last stage of this project. Uh, but before we get to that, just want to give a brief overview of the project, and then we'll take a look at some of the progress and talk about the work that's yet to come. So the Rock Creek Park Multi-Use Trail and Pedestrian Bridge Project this is reconstructing nearly four miles of the Rock Creek Trail, the southern limits of the project through P Street in Georgetown, all the way up to Broad Branch on the northern limits of the project. Some of the key improvements of this project is creating a new eight tenths mile trail along the Piney Branch Parkway, as well as a two tenths trail, two tenths mile trail from Pierce Mill up to Broad Branch. Um, the key feature, we have a new 110 foot pedestrian bridge just south of the zoo tunnel um, that has been under construction and is getting near to completion. Additionally, the project has reconstructed four tenths of a mile segment in Rose Park Trail in Georgetown. And the project does span four wards of the district, wards one, two, three, and four. And really, as a construction team, when we look at this project, we divide it up into really seven different stages. Um, these are ordered numerically from south to north. Um, and Omed alluded to it earlier. We now completed four of these stages. Stage one is the new Rose Park Trail in Georgetown. Stage four is the Western Ridge Trail just north of Porter Street. We completed stage six, which is right in front of the Grove One picnic area up to the Pierce Mill. 
And finally, stage seven is completed, which are two parallel trails from Pierce Mill up to Broad Branch. So since we last presented in September, we've been working on two critical stages. This is stage two, which is highlighted here in purple. This is really the longest segment of the project from P Street to Shoreham Drive, as well as stage three, which includes a new trail through the National Zoo, as well as that pedestrian bridge. So I quickly here in the next few minutes, just wanna show some of the progress that's been going on before we get into more of the construction timeline. Stage two, we began this back in September of 2021. And I'm sure as most of you are aware that there is an ongoing detour for the Rock Creek Trail as this going on. We'll be happy to report here shortly. That's coming to an end very soon. As I mentioned, the scope of this stage is a new 10 foot wide trail. It's a mix of Permville asphalt, as well as our, our typical asphalt pavement sections from P Street in Georgetown up to Shoreham Drive. And we're making a new 10 foot wide trail Pretty much all the way through this segment. But we'll get into this around the construction timeline, but we're looking at wrapping this up here in just the next couple weeks. Take a look at some of the progress photos. This is construction of the trail. You can see in the left here, we remove the existing trail section, get down to subgrade. And on the right, this is construction of a porous subgrade for the permeable asphalt. So that allows storm runoff to go through the Permville asphalt section and kind of retain storm water within that, that porous, uh, porous subgrade section. Additionally, some other improvements. We have a new timber fence as well as timber edging along this new section of the trail. This is a good example. <clears throat> On the left is the existing condition prior to construction. You can see a much narrower trail as well as kind of that dirt social path paralleling it. And that same area here on the right, this is just after paving the new 10 foot wide trail section. You can see it's a much better improvement there. And I also mentioned stage three as part of the ongoing work. Um, one of the key improvements of stage three is reconstructing the zoo loop trail, uh, which runs along Rock Creek into the National Zoological Park. Uh, this trail has actually been closed to the public since 2018, so we're excited to get this back open here within the next couple months. Uh, we can we started construction of this phase um, last summer, July 2021, and the scope of work not only includes the reconstruction of that Zoo Loop Trail, but we're also doing some stream bank restoration right along that same section along Rock Creek. And then the key feature of the project is a new pedestrian bridge. This is really just south of that Zoo Tunnel. And what this, uh, between the new trail and the new pedestrian bridge, this is going to remove trail users off of the congested vehicle bridge, as well as give them the option to not use the narrow pathway through that tunnel. Part of this work does require us to have some closures in place along Beach Drive. Um, these have been in place, as I'm sure you're aware, for the last few months between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Um, but we'll hit on that in a little bit here. We're almost done with that closure um, and won't be needing that here in the near future. So take a look at some of the progress photos of stage three. So the bridge, the superstructure is comprised of two precast T-beams. These arrived to site and were sent to place earlier this year. These two girders are then tied together with an ultra high concrete mix. Here you can see installation of the actual trail surface along the pedestrian bridge. And I think there's a good photo on the left that kind of highlights the existing uh, way for trail users to get through this section is along the, the existing vehicle bridge on this narrow sidewalk. Um, once this is open, trail users will have a much wider um, bridge that's used only for, for trail traffic. Some more photos of ongoing construction of the bridge. On the left, that's the new um, cable safety railing that's been installed along the bridge. On the right-hand side, elevation view of the new pedestrian bridge over Rock Creek. And in the foreground here, this is just after we started installation of some of the stream bank restoration along the banks of Rock Creek. 
take a look at the actual zoo loop itself. Again, this is a brand new reconstruction of this trail. Uh, majority of this trail through the National Zoo is about 10 feet wide. We see some improvements of the timber fence, the timber edging, as well as a paved stone channel way to help direct uh, stormwater. Okay, so those are just some of the improvements we've been working on since we last spoke in September. Um, I think what we're here tonight is really focus on the construction timeline for getting this ongoing work complete and what we have coming up in the future. Um, so to speak of that, we have our resident engineer, Kenny Rafter, that's going to talk through that. Thanks, Andy. Uh, so as we've discussed uh, already, Rock Creek Trail between Peace Street and Shoreham Drive is uh, finishing up right now, and we're scheduled to open that early next week, so that's good news. Uh, that means all the detours through um, this stretch of, of trail are, are gonna be taken down. Uh, the public's gonna be open, uh, free to use this section of trail again between P Street and Shoreham, stage two. Uh, next is we went over some of the progress in, in stage three with the zoo loop. Um, this work should be complete by the end of July. We have a few items left, including asphalt paving, uh, electrical work for bridge lighting, and some bridge railing to complete. Um, so this should be open, uh, ready to use at the end of July. Um, tonight, really, we wanted to go over stage five, which is Piney Branch Trail. Uh, these are going to be the big um, impacts to, to the public here, the final push, heavy lift of construction. Um, we'll be starting that at the end of June uh, and continue through the fall. Uh, so again, Piney Branch Trail, as we've discussed earlier, uh, we can get into the details here on the next slide. So as you can see, stage five in green, um, we started some of this work in the past. Uh, we were able to do some work around Arkansas Avenue and Piney Branch at uh, the intersection with minimal impact to, to the public. Uh, but what we wanted to focus on tonight was um, these next stages of construction here uh, that'll restrict access to Piney Branch. Um, so this work is gonna bring a couple big improvements to the area. Uh, first, we're gonna install a new eight foot wide trail over the existing social trail. This is going to be uh, mostly not mostly porous asphalt sections, like in other areas that we've constructed. Um, and uh, again, some of the portion has been completed up near Arkansas, but we can continue that all the way from Arkansas down to Beach Drive. And the second big improvement is going to be reconstruction of that historic collapsed stone wall along Piney Branch. Um, we're going to be installing 16 soldier piles to support the wall, and we're going to use some of that existing stone to salvage where possible. Um, this is stone that was installed back in the 1930s. Uh, where possible, we'll use that to incorporate into the new wall and uh, use a mixture of uh, different stones that uh, we're able to match with that existing existing wall. Uh, so we can take a look in the details here. So this is on the, on the left is a photo of the existing conditions. As you can see, just a narrow social trail, uh, just a dirt path that stretches from Arkansas Avenue to Beach Drive. And on the right, is going to be the new trail. It's an eight foot wide section of trail, uh, again, porous and non porous. And then on these slides, you can see where the existing retaining wall or revetment wall is collapsed. Um, so there's a 90 foot section that's just completely sunk into the creek. Uh, you can see the big stone sections just falling off. Uh, it's big, it's been a big risk to uh, trail users in the past. Um, so we're gonna come in again, install these soldier piles, uh, rebuild the wall and rebuild the parapet along the side, um, bring uh, aesthetic and safety improvements to the public here. And really get into the details here about how this is gonna impact the public. Um, so at the end of June, uh, you can expect to see um, what we'll call stage 5A is uh, to mobilize the crew and start working on the trail construction. We will need to close westbound Piney Branch from Arkansas Avenue to Beach Drive. This is going to start at the end of June through about mid-July. Um, we're going to have a detour in place, which we can look at in the next slide here. Uh, so starting in Arkansas, uh, for vehicles traveling westbound towards Beach Drive, they'll be detoured down along 16th Street and right onto Park Road. And then from there, they'll be taken up to either northbound Beach Drive or southbound Beach Drive. 
Uh, again, during this stage, east abound towards Arkansas Avenue is going to remain open. Um, so this this first stage is just going to be the westbound closure. Again, one lane is going to stay open uh, heading towards Arkansas Avenue. And then following this, um, when we need to, our, our subcontractor that's going to be coming in to install the piles uh, is going to be taking up a bigger section of the roadway. So we're going to need to close down eastbound um, between from mid-July through the fall, through the end of construction. Um, so in addition to the westbound closure, it's going to be a full closure. Uh, eastbound is going to be closed between Beach Drive and 17th Street. Uh, so we can take a look at that closure again on the next slide here. Um, so, again, in addition to that westbound closure, we just looked at, um, we're going to have a detour in place between beach drive and 17th street. So, northbound and southbound uh, vehicles on beach drive will be detoured to park road and then left on 17th street. And then from there, uh, they will be able to access uh, piney branch parkway past the closure. Traffic control and safety. Um, so. Our crews are going to be working within the lane closures. Um, we're going to have the proper traffic control devices, including detours, uh, construction signage, portable variable messaging signs. Uh, our folks will be wearing their high visibility PPE, uh, safety vests, hard hats. Um, so we're, we're doing our part to protect the work zone. And now we just plead that the public respect the work zones, allow our crews to finish up safely and on time. Uh, and our, our ultimate goal is just finish this as quickly as possible uh, to be able to turn it over back to the public. Um, so, again, our plea is just respect the work zones, follow the, the detours uh, while Piney Ranch is restricted, and we're, we're hoping to get this open as soon as possible. Uh, so now I can turn it back over to Shana. She can uh, show you guys how to keep in touch with the project moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Kenny. Um, we are making sure that we uh, inform the public at every turn through uh, use of the monthly newsletter. We send out uh, timely traffic advisories uh, ahead of any closure, normally two weeks in advance, so that the public is notified. Uh, we attend um, some ANSI meetings, and then we host these public outreach uh, meetings so that we can increase communication with the community. And also, I'm always available um, via email, or you can reach out to us via the website. So the project website is up. We have its dedicated project newsletter, uh, DDOT social media outlets. DDOT is constantly posting about updates, any closures, any detours um, that you need to know about, as well as the NPS newsletter uh, and stakeholder list. So any of those um, Kind of communications you can connect with and you can always reach out to me via my email. I'm going to put that in the chat uh, and ask any questions and we uh, pride ourselves in a 24 hour turnaround for any kind of um, questions that you may have. So thank you so much. Uh, I think that is the end of our presentation. I'll hand it over back over to Andy uh, for final closing. Oh, Excuse me. <laughs> we also want to make sure that we share that this is a Title V as a recipient of the federal assistance. DDOT must ensure that all of its program activities and public meetings are conducted in compliance with the Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This act ensures non discrimination based on race, color, or national origin. The Title VI public meeting participant questionnaire is used to help DDOT. Ensure that we are informing the public and conducting our meetings in a non discriminatory manner in compliance with Title VI. Project comments and or concerns may also be submitted through this form, and we appreciate anyone who is willing to complete the form. Thank you so much for your participation. Thank you so much. I will hand it back over to Andy. Hey, Shana. Um, I would plan you want to go ahead and we can just start uh, going through Q&A, whether it's through the chat function or on phone. If you want to read the questions and we have the project team answer. Okay, great. Let's see. Okay, first question. Will the, will the, Open Zoo Loop allow access from Adams Mill Road. 
So go back to the schematic of stage three here. So there's no change, at least the project's not making any changes to access to the zoo or to Rock Creek um, at Adams Mill. The purpose of the new, or I should say the reconstructed zoo loop trail, since it was an existing trail, it's been closed for a number of years, um, is to get trail users out of the narrow sidewalks through this tunnel. Um, so the new trail will allow folks to follow the path of Rock Creek through the zoo and back out on the other end of the tunnel without actually having to enter the tunnel. But at least for the scope of our project, we're not performing any additional work um, where Adams Mill interfaces with the National Zoo. Thank you, Andy. Uh, next question or a comment. Thank you for your hard work on the project. Have the archaeologists found anything of interest in the part two area, stage two, uh, near the Devil's Chair Bridge? Um, right, I'll tee this off and then maybe Nick, if you want to provide MPSs, some update from MPS. So, right, this has been part of the work that's holding up completion of the construction. Um, DDOT partnered with MPS to perform some additional archaeological investigation um, just south of the Devil's Foot Chair. But uh, Nick, do you want to provide an update on, on behalf of MPS with what, if anything, sure. was found? Sure, we had a team of archaeologists uh, uh, working in the area uh, during the construction so they could monitor as construction was proceeding. And fortunately, nothing was found. Um, and the, the trail construction proceeded. And uh, yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> where we, yeah, that's that's where it stands with archaeology right now. Thank you much, Andy. Thank you so much, Andy and Nick. Um, the next question is also pertaining to the same area of the trail. Uh, yes, this is correct. The question basically is, uh, thanks so much for all of your hard work on this project. I just wanted to confirm that the work around the Devil's Foot Bridge is wrapping up this week, and the southern portion of the trail should be open next week. Is that correct? It's correct. Yes. I think, yeah, that's big news. Um, just pulled up the construction timeline. So weather pending, um, we still have just a few more paving activities to do in that area, but our goal is to have this open at some point next week, depending on weather, hopefully towards earlier last week. But what this means is we will lift the detour and the Rock Creek multi-use trail will be open. So, you know, from P Street to Shoreham Drive, you'll be able to ride freely through there um, and we'll, we'll lift that detour. I think that's big news. Big yes, news. we're all excited about that. Um, I want to share also with the community that I live in this area as well. So I'm just as excited about the opening of the trail and my dog um, so that we can walk freely through this area because it's been closed off for a while. So we do appreciate everyone's patience uh, during this time. If anyone has any other questions, please do use the Q&A um, or if you're on the phone, uh, please do raise your hand if you have a question. Molly, do we have any questions uh, from the phone line? Yes, a call in user just raised their hand. Um, you should receive a request to unmute now. Hello? Hello. Hello. Yes, great. Okay, so my question is about how pine, the new eight foot wide piney branch trail, which is totally awesome, is going to interact with Beach Drive. There's, uh, it doesn't seem like there's going to be a very safe way to, for a bicyclist to get across Beach Drive, and I wonder if your plan has uh, got any, any aspect that will help the safety there. Right. I'll, I'll start this, and then maybe Kenny or even Dave, I know we've had these discussions, so maybe you can, can correct me here if I go astray. Um, so right, the project is building the new trail on Piney Branch um, from Arkansas down to there's some existing sidewalk on a bridge right there with Beach Drive. Um, so after we're done with construction, the current plan as it is would have a trail user coming down, I guess I would say westbound on Piney Branch, and then have to go about 25 
feet north on Beach Drive in order to cross at the existing crosswalk that's currently in place. Um, this is something that was brought to our attention by uh, Michael Alvino uh, with the bicycle group at DDOT and his team about potentially looking to see if we could relocate that crosswalk um, a little bit, I guess, more in line with the Piney Branch Trail and existing sidewalk. That's that's something we're continuing to look at a, as a project team together, if that's something we can do under this scope of work, but we're we're not currently sure if that's something that will be done on this project. Um, Dave, anything to add on that from the, the engineer standpoint? No, I think you pretty much uh, hit the nail on the head with that one. It's uh, really just being discussed whether it's going to be happening with this project or it may be added on as a, a new task after construction. Right. Okay. And the reason for that is it's not as it's not as simple as just, you know, painting a new crosswalk and putting in new uh, sidewalk ramps. That intersection at uh, Piney Branch and Beach Drive is actually located on a bridge. So there would actually be some complicated modifications to that bridge structure and some of its assets on the underside that would be required in order to relocate that. But as I Andy point. mentioned, sorry, Andy for interruption. Yeah. Uh, at the moment is not part of uh, scope of, for this project uh, right. because we have a plan to complete the uh, phase five uh, uh, in Piney Branch from uh, 16 uh, from Arkansas to Beach Drive to be completed by early fall 22. And we don't have a plan mm -hmm. to put it on the scope of, of this project. Maybe uh, we are working our part with partner to create a new project for that. Okay, well, then I just want to say thank you very much for all the wonderful work that you've already done. I'm really excited about it, and uh, I, I can't wait to get back on the trail on my bike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Do we have any additional questions? Uh, whether that be on the phone line or through the Q&A? We have um, one new one. Uh, yes, we do have one from the Q&A. Uh, the wayfinding signs have the main trail users between Bluff Bridge and Klingle Trail along Beach Drive and not, newly com and not the newly completed stage four pavement. Will this be fixed? Wayfinding signs have the main trail users. Um, so I'm not completely familiar. Kenny, do you know, are all the signs at this stage four area installed? Yeah, every stage, uh, I'm assuming we're talking about the Western Ridge Trail here. Uh, everything there has been installed. I'm, I'm not sure I quite understand the question. Uh, everything over there has been installed. It's I wonder if it's a matter of they're installed incorrectly. Uh, is, is that the question? Well, it sounds like so. I mean, at this section, there is the Western Ridge Trail, which is on obviously the western side of Rock Creek and mm -hmm. Rock Creek South South, which is on the eastern side on Beach Drive. So I, I guess the comment is that the wayfinding signs are directing users to. Yeah, Andrew, yes, I imagine that once uh, we've been working on stage uh, four, the in Western Ridge Trail uh, from the Porter Street to Bluff. Footbridge, and we use the that during the construction we use the detour uh, using the trail along the beach drive, and we have this all the sign in place. I think it's something, Shane. I, I think I understand the question. Um, let me take the harder look out here in the field to make sure everything makes sense. And you know, Dave, not to put you on the spot. I don't know if you have the plans in front of you, but. Um, We'll have to just confirm, you know, what the signage is there and what what the plan show. I'm pulling it up now on my end and just taking a quick look at it. Okay. All right, Shane, if you want to hop ahead. Yeah, and sure. Back to that. Absolutely. Um, we have another question. Can you remind us what the zoo loop hours will be? Has the Smithsonian made any changes to their security stance around the trail? Um, as far as I know, and then, you know, Nick, if you have any further comment, 
uh, the zoo loop trail will only be open um, when the zoo is open. There are gates that are being installed at the interface of the Rock Creek Park Trail and the zoo. My understanding is that the zoo will be closing and locking those when the zoo is, is closed. Andy, that's correct. That's my understanding as well. Thank you. Um, so we have an, oh, we are getting more questions in and it is hard for me to check. Let's see. We have another question about, okay, what is the rationale for the only, for only an eight foot trail along Piney Branch versus a wider standard uh, 10 foot trail? Um, let's see here. Sorry, I'm just going through the plans. Dave, I don't know if you have a comment as EOR is, I'm sure there's space restrictions there between the existing curb line of Piney Branch Parkway. Parkway as well as the existing resentment wall? Yes, that, that's exactly right. There are restrictions um, based on the existing conditions of how wide we can make the trail. And in fact, we are, to even get the trail to be eight feet wide, there's a section of Piney Branch that we are shrinking down to accommodate eight foot wide trail. Uh, just uh, for clarification, in um, stage two from PS3 to Shoreham Drive, we do have a 10 feet wide trail. Great, thank you all. Uh, next question, and then we'll uh, do the chat, and then we'll take some over the phone and then come back to the chat. Are there any plans to, re to repair or reinstall the physical fitness installations along phase two area? Also, the Devil's Chair Bridge in Phase 2 remains damaged after a car struck it a year or two ago. Will it be repaired? I think on the fitness equipment, there's there's nothing under this scope of work for the DDOT side. But Nick, as for NPS, is there any? Yeah, I believe that we have a, a project that should be underway this summer to replace or and do some repair work on uh, the, some of that fitness equipment on Shoreham Drive. Um, as for the area at uh, Lions Mill Bridge, that was struck um, by a car some two, three years ago, and uh, it is our intent to, to fix that. Thank you, Nick. Nick. Uh, Molly, can we take a question from the... Yes, um, Greg uh, has their hand raised. You should receive a request to unmute now. Just wondering, uh, is the um, pedestrian bridge and the Zulu Trail plan to uh, both open simultaneously, or will one open before the other? Sure, Kenny, do you want to take that question? And they have your finger on the pulse with the schedule there. Sure. Um, I think that the uh, the critical path would be the bridge opening. Uh, so I, th I think the bridge needs to be open first before the zoo, because uh, that's that's really going to be the entrance to that. Um, Zoo Loop Trail, the gate to get in is a little bit further behind uh, the last piece of work that we need to do. Um, so the, the bridge will be open. And then by the time that's open, the zoo will be open as well. So they'll open simultaneously. Thank you. Um, there's another question about the Zoo Loop hours. Good Wednesday evening. Will Zoo Loop be restricted in hours? I think Nick, you answered that. If you have anything else to add, no. As team, oh, go ahead, Nick. Oh, sorry, Omid. Uh, yeah, nothing much to add. Uh, the, the zoo loops hours really are determined by um, the zoo itself. So it is our understanding again that they will close and lock the doors, the gates for the zoo loop trail when they close the zoo. Thank you so much. Sure. Uh, north of Military Road is Bingham Drive leading to Utah Street. Is this within the scope of the project? If so, what are the plans? So Bingham Drive is not in the scope of the project, but Bingham Drive is going to be reconstructed. Um, DC Water is just about to undertake that work. Uh, the roadway has a new sewer line that run underneath it, and um, it had 
you know, it was impacted by the construction. So CC Water will shortly come in there and completely rebuild the road from Beach Drive to Oregon Avenue. Thank you. North, oh, I was gonna read the same question. <laughs> um, from an ADA perspective, could two wheelchairs pass each other in the tunnel? I don't think so, no. Because it's very narrow right now. Thank you. But if those two wheelchairs were to pass on the zoo loop, it, what, is it possible? Definitely, that yes. Is the alternative? Okay. Wonderful. Yes, that's why. It's the purpose of this project, to create that uh, zoo loop, to avoid going through the very narrow um, uh, walk side in the tunnel. Thank you so much. Um, and last question in our Q and A on the chat. If you do have another Q and A, please share that with us in the chat. Uh, the last question is curious if there will be any painted lane separation on any portion of the paved trail. Thank Penny or Dave, I think we do right for some where there's maybe sharper turns or a steep grade. Don't we have some sections where there's a lane divide? That is correct. And that's uh, typically placed, yeah, around sharper corners and turns and underneath the uh, Porter Street Bridge just to enhance areas of concern. Thank you. Um, I just actually got a question to my email. Will uh, motorbikes, I guess they re are referring to the scooters, will they be allowed on the trail? So m motorized scooters, no. Electric bikes, yes. Um, you know, scooters themselves with electric, uh, with electric uh, motors, yes. But uh, no motorized things like mopeds or motorcycles, no. Thank you. Uh, Molly just notified us that we have one question on the phone line. Um, we're ready for that. All right, uh, call in user, you should receive a request to unmute now. Hi, um, thanks for all this information. Uh, my question is about the zoo loop. Since you mentioned that um, it will be closed when the zoo is closed, I'm wondering what the current need for a ticket to enter the zoo means <clears throat> will there be a need to go through the website to get a ticket entrance to the zoo in order to use the zoo loop you mean it, to, to enter into the zoo from the zoo loop like you used to be able to do over that bridge right well all of the above i mean if you're just on the trail and want to use the zoo loop and the pedestrian bridge but otherwise do not intend to go into the zoo. Um, will you need a ticket to go to the zoo? And also your question about, um, I, I mean, that was really the question. Not, no, I, I don't believe that's, that's the intent. Um, not at all. You, you should be able to freely use the zoo loop as long as the zoo is open. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we have no additional um, questions in our chat. Molly, are there any additional questions on the phone line? There are no hands raised currently, and there are no questions on Facebook. Okay. Um, if anyone has any questions, please do share them in the chat uh, on Facebook or uh, on the phone line, you can raise your hand either way. We'll give another minute or two while the full team is here. Uh, and just while we wait for any last minute questions, Andy, do you have, or uh, Omid, do you guys have any remarks in terms of you know, where this project is currently, um, kind of what we've been able to achieve over the past couple of months uh, and where it's going.
Uh, for me, Shannon, I'm just, you know, looking forward to getting into the final stage of construction and I'll just ask anyone if they have any questions, concerns, please reach out to the project team and we'll be very responsive to those. Yes, just, and as Andy mentioned, just one stage of the project remained from, from Piney Branch Parkway from Beach Drive to Arkansas Avenue, which will take by hopefully by early fall 22, and then project will be completed. Thank you so much. I am typing my email in the Q&A chat room um, or in chat space so that if anyone has any additional questions after our call, you can reach out to me um, and we will make sure that we get back to you as soon as possible. Um, with that, we would like to um, say thank you so much for joining the call. We've got another comment from Garrett. Thank you so much. Uh, really excited about the project. And uh, yes, we are too, and we're happy to be bringing this forth uh, for DC residents and all stakeholders. So thank you all so much for joining our discussion today and learning more about the project. Please let us know if you have any questions in the future or any concerns. Thank you.